48th lecture and we are going to discuss the synthesis of this particular configuration that is LC ladder uh, terminated at one end with a resistance. At the other end it is driven by either a voltage generator or a current generator. That is why I have not indicated whether it is a voltage generator or current generator. It could be a voltage generator, it could be a current generator. Accordingly, the transfer function could be any of the four types. For example, V2 by I1 would be a transfer impedance, I2 by V1 would be a transfer admittance, V2 by V1 would be a transfer open uh, would be a voltage transfer function, I2 by I1 would be a current transfer function. This is uh, the specific thing that we, shall, we are going to discuss today. But a couple of points about transmission zeros before we go on to this. You recall that transmission zeros are values of S at which the transfer function vanishes T of S 0 equal to 0 if T is the transfer function. It could be impedance, admittance or a ratio of voltages <coughs> or a ratio of currents. If there exists a frequency at which the value is 0 then that is called a transmission 0. Uh, we also saw that uh, for a ladder network, for a ladder network transmission zeros are either the series impedance poles or shunt impedance zeros. For a ladder network the transmission zeros are either series impedance poles or shunt impedance zeros and since these are driving point impedances they must be positive real functions and therefore ladder networks are necessarily necessarily minimum phase networks. A minimum phase network is one in which the zero of transmission is, is in the left half plane. Ladder networks are minimum phase. You would also recall that a series impedance pole is not necessarily a transmission zero. If the input impedance looking from that impedance, if the impedance looking here also has a pole at the same frequency then that is not a transmission zero. For example, as I said if you have a network like this, well this does not have a transmission zero at s equal to 0 because at s equal to 0 this gives rise to a pole, but this is also a pole and therefore the voltage is distributed between the two. Uh, <coughs> let us take a specific example to make some other points. Uh, we have let us say a network like this. Uh, suppose we have in the ladder somewhere we have a an LC circuit like this. Okay. Then perhaps then we have let us say a capacitor, <coughs> another capacitor and so on. If we have a circuit like this obviously plus minus j 1 by square root L c shall be a pair of transmission zeros provided the input impedance here also does not have a pole there. Now what kind of a factor will this give rise to in the numerator of the transfer function. Whatever the transfer function is as soon as we discover <coughs> that we have a pair of zeros at plus minus j by root L c, what kind of a factor shall it give rise to in the numerator? Obviously s squared plus 1 by L c. Okay. Suppose I have another such another such L c parallel circuit, let us say L prime c prime, then obviously I shall have another factor S squared plus 1 over L prime c prime. No, it is a transmission 0. The transfer function vanishes at that frequency okay? and therefore it has to be in the numerator. Yeah, what was the question? the equivalent value of that and well, give a zero of pole. I can write, pardon me? So, that would give a uh, pole of transmission. Pole of this is a zero of transmission. transmission. Whenever this becomes open, there will be no transmission to the right. 
it is a zero of transmission. A zero of transmission of a ladder is either a series impedance pole or a shunt impedance zero. Okay. So, we shall have factors like this in the numerator. Suppose now L prime and C prime are identical to L and C, then obviously we shall have a double order 0 of transmission at plus minus j by square root L c at plus minus j by square root L c all right. The point <coughs> that I want to make is that there may be multiple zeros of transmission on the j omega axis which is not permitted in a driving point function. In a driving point function on the j omega axis zeros and poles must be simple. This is not so for a transfer function. A transfer function can have a factor like this. Okay. Suppose you continue L prime equal to L C prime equal to C. Suppose we continue we have another capacitance here and let us say an inductance here and suppose my ladder terminates here. Okay. Let us name them. Let us call them R 1. I have another resistance here R 2. Let us call this as C 2. This is C 1. Um, call this C 3, C 4, then perhaps uh, we have not used any other L. So, let us say L 1 and let us call this as R 4. By looking at this, looking at the ladder circuit, ladder network, one can find out, one can conclude about the transmission zeros. For example, this capacitor does R 1 give rise to a transmission 0? No, it is a constant. And in any case, if this is a voltage generator, if this is a voltage generator, then anything connected in parallel with the voltage generator is ineffective. All right? So, that should not concern us. Anyway, resistance is a constant, it cannot give rise to a transmission 0. This C 1 obviously gives rise to a transmission 0, provided looking to the right is also not C 1 looking to the right at s equal to 0, s equal to 0, what is the situation? This is open, this is short, this is open, this is short, this is open, this is short and then you have a resistance. So, there is a path from C 1 to R 4. So, C 1 indeed blocks transmission and therefore, there is, let us make a catalog of transmission 0. One is at s equal to 0 due to C 1. Is there any other capacitance or inductance here which gives rise to a transmission 0 at s equal to 0? Any other? No. no. Okay. At infinity, how many transmission zeros are there? Are there any first at infinity? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Obviously, this gives rise to a transmission 0, this gives rise to a transmission 0 at infinity and also this inductor Open. at infinity and therefore, at infinity there are three transmission zeros. All right, there are three transmission zeros. Agreed? One due to L1, one due to C4, one due to C3. There are two due to LC and LC. Okay, so S equal to plus minus J by square root LC. There are two of them. Is there any other transmission zero? We have taken care of. What about this one? there is a transmission 0 at S equal to minus 1 over R 2 C 2 that is one transmission 0. So, that uh, 0 of transmission due to C 3. Yes. Won't it be cancelled out because looking to the right of that. Looking to the right of that. Short. So, C 4 will also be a short at infinity. This will also be a short at infinity. Yes. So, so that won't the current division anywhere be there? So I mean that. Uh, Let there be a current division, but this is open. So there is only one zero. Yes, yeah, so this See is the one zero. Due oh, to C3. due to C three and C four, there are not two zeros. Is that what you are saying? Yes, sir. Because when C three is short, so is C four. Yes, sir. But then so is open L one. L one is also open at that point. So, but the uh, zero so is only due to L one. There is an there is a zero due to L one. So suppose if there was uh, there was suppose if there was any uh, one resistance instead of instead of L one. Suppose there was a resistance instead of L one. Yes. So then there was only only one. Okay. 
what is uh, the comment? There is a objection to uh, making both C3 and C4 responsible for a transmission 0 at infinity. There is an objection to that. You agree or you do not? <laughs> you see, oh, there is a Sir, because there is also capacitance in C3 and C4, that will be short. Yeah, that is what he is saying, that if this is short, obviously there is no transmission. But looking here, is the impedance equal to 0? Looking here, is the impedance equal to 0? Yes, At infinite frequency? Yes, sir. Yes, it is 0. And therefore, one of C3 and C4 creates a transmission, the other does not. It is an extremely interesting point. And C4 Pardon me? Only C4, creates, only, C4 creates. only C4 creates, that is C4, correct. C3 can be shifted ahead, sir. Where? No, we do not we don't want to physically shift C3. I mean, if it is if it is in its place, let it rest in peace. But it does not create a transmission 0. Why not? I, this is precisely the point. This is precisely why I use so, this but, particular circuit. But the circuit is already open. So does not matter. Because of L1, it is open, but suppose L1 was not there, okay? that is why how multiple, uh, for example here, if this is open, this is also open, right? but the input impedance here is not a pole, it is there, it is 1 by SC3 and therefore this creates a transmission 0, this also creates a transmission 0, that this is open does not hamper this also being open. On the other hand, this short faces another short and therefore C3 does not create a transmission 0. In other words, at S equal to infinity only 2. Only two. And that is due to not C3, but C4 and L1. Okay? Now, the sir, yes. Clarify that point, sir, like there are two short circuits in parallel now. Correct. So, uh, we can shift call for So, it is not a transmission 0. In other words, if there is a short circuit in parallel, two short circuits, the current, there is a current division. So, but, but suppose this was a finite impedance, then the current flows through this only. Yes, so, it is a perfect transmission. Yes, sir. So, but if there were these two uh, capacitors and uh, resistor instead of L1, so that means there would have been no zero at all. If, yeah. say it again. So, if there was uh, resistance instead, instead of, of C4? Instead of inductor. L1. Instead of this, instead of L1, L1. Instead of inductor, if there was a resistance, so then there would have been. No then, no. then no. there would not have been a transmission zero due to L1. Okay, fine. Yes. There would not have been a and two Correct. short circuits and resistor. Correct. But due to C4, there would have been one yes. transmission. Yes. So, but even then, due to C4, mm -hmm. when C4 will be short, C3 will also be short. Correct. That means there will be a voltage reason. That is right. Current reason. No, no. Current when reason. C4 is a short, nothing goes further. But when C3 is a short, there something goes further. Okay. Now, on the basis of this data, on the basis of this data. Zero Pardon me? So, L and L dash create a 0 at S equal to infinity? No, because it is shorted. C is shorted. So, L and L prime at infinity are ineffective. They are shorted out. Okay. Now, let me take this data <coughs> and do some intelligent, intelligent conclusions. I have transmission zeros 1 at s equal to minus 1 by r 2 c 2, 1 at s equal to 0, 2 at s equal to infinity and 2 at plus minus j. s equal to plus minus j by square root l c. Can I write <coughs> from this the transfer function? Can I write? You see the numerator will be S plus 1 over R to C2. There is a 0 at the origin, so the S must be a factor. Then <coughs> 2 at infinity, what does this indicate? <coughs> one by S one by S by S Not at all. 1 S by S square will can Pardon me? No. Make another intelligent guess. 
degree of the numerator. That is right. It only means that the degree of the denominator shall be two greater than, than the, the degree of the numerator. Hmm. Right? Okay. So, I have to add this to s squared plus 1 over L c whole squared. Therefore, what will be the degree of the denominator now? 4 here, 5, 6 and therefore it would be 8. In other words, I shall have the denominator of the form B8 s to the 8 plus B7 s to the 7 plus etc. plus B0. Is that okay? In general, right? Can you also find, <coughs> is this point clear that the form of the transfer function I have been able to write? In the numerator, I wrote with leading coefficient unity. That is why in the denominator, I did not make it unity. I could have made this unity by adding a constant k. I could have done that. Now, is there any other information that I can get from here? Can I find out, for example, B0? No. no. no there are no factors because I do not know these constants. But can I determine some of these constants? B0, for example. Can I? No, at B0 we have to concentrate at S equal to 0. So, at S equal to 0, look at the network and see, pardon me? Correct, but the, which means that the transfer function at S equal to 0 would be, would tend to some k prime s, right? It would tend to? In general, if it is a transmission 0 at s equal to 0, then as s tends to 0, the transfer function must tend to s multiplied by a constant. Yes? Similarly, if it is a transmission 0 at infinity, then as s tends to infinity, it must be constant divided by s. Or if there are two transmission 0 to infinity, constant divided by s squared. From this information, and from the network. You can rip, you can you can simplify the network at s equal to 0, you retain C1 because this creates a transmission 0. You forget about this branch, this is infinite, this is a short, this is infinite, this is a short, this is infinite, this is a short. So, all you have is C1 R4, is not that right? So, the transfer function would be R4 divided by R4 plus 1 by S C 1. So, the numerator would be, would be of the form S C 1 R 4 and the denominator would be of the form 1 as S tends to 0. So, you can find out this product C 1 R 4. <laughs> okay. Let me use a different color. Correct. You see what I was trying to do is can I find K by B 0 in terms of the circuit elements? Well, we can because at s as s tends to 0, well this is ineffective, this remains, this becomes open, this becomes short at s equal to 0 mind you, this becomes a short, this becomes open, this becomes open, this is a short. So, all I have is C 1 in series with R 4, in shunt with R 4. Is that clear? At s equal to 0, the whole network reduces to a capacitance and a resistance. So, we are assuming a voltage source. We are assuming a voltage source, yes. What about R1? What about R1? R1 is in parallel to voltage source, so it does not matter. If it was a current source, yes, it should, there would have been a split. So, at s equal to 0, the transfer function tends to SC1 R4 and therefore, C1 R4 must be equal to K divided by B0. Point made? Okay. These are some of the intelligent guesses that one can make from uh, <coughs> these transfer functions. Let me ask you another question. If you have an LC network, if you have an LC network, some of the finer points of two port synthesis, and these are common sense questions, one has to think about this. You have a pure LC two port. Now, you know that Z 1 1, Z 2 2, Z 1 2, all the three parameters 
are odd rational functions. This we have proved. They are odd rational functions. Okay. If you want the voltage transfer function or the current transfer function, for example, if you want the open circuit voltage transfer function V1, V2, what is this ratio in terms of these parameters? It is Z12 divided by no Z11. Now this is odd, this is odd. And therefore, the transfer function would be a purely <coughs> even <coughs> rational function. That is, if you write this as P of S divided by Q of S, then both P and Q shall be even polynomials. Is this point clear? But suppose there was a resistance somewhere in the circuit, maybe as a termination, then this property is destroyed. Is that clear? So, yes. That means it will modify that parameter. Yeah, it will modify the parameters, and therefore this property that will be purely rational, purely even, shall no longer be valid. Okay. All right. So now, the overall transfer function will be purely even, but to the numerator and the denominator individually have to be even. No, that, that it cannot be otherwise. You see, if you have an even rational function, even rational function must be the ratio of a even polynomial to an even polynomial. Suppose the factor S in both the numerator and the That cancels out. We are taking P and Q to be primes with respect to each other. That is, they have no common factors. Okay? Right. Another question. You said uh, a ladder is minimum Excuse phase. Me? Yes. Yes, For yes. any polynomial, uh, for any rational function to be even. So both the numerator and denominator has to be even or have to be even. So they are both odd. They are both odd S factor will cancel out. So they will become even by even. Right? Odd polynomial is S times an even polynomial. So even if odd even if it is odd by odd and that is also an even polynomial. That is also even by even. S q plus one by S plus one. That means S is a factor in both numerator and denominator yes, and that cancels out. So that is a trivial case. Okay, a ladder is a minimum phase network and I said that there exist non-minimum phase networks which are one of the common examples in all pass networks. We have also done an architecture, a structure of a non-minimum phase network and that is a lattice. Do you recall a lattice? We did this when doing two port. A lattice, we just recall what we did because we will have occasion to talk about lattice later. A lattice is a network like this. Did we do lattice when doing two ports? No, sir. Are you sure? Was a problem. Was a problem. Only a problem. All right, all right. Let's spend some time on this. A lattice, usually, the form in which it is used is a symmetrical lattice. That is, it goes like this. There is an impedance Z A here and there is an impedance Z B here. It is a criss cross. Okay. This is called a symmetrical lattice. Symmetrical lattice. Whether you view whether you take this as one port or this this as the first port, it does not matter because it is symmetric. The network is symmetric. All right. One should also realize that this uh, the lattice is simply a redrawn configuration of a bridge network. Okay? That it is a bridge can be very easily shown. Suppose we take <coughs> 1, 2, 3 and 4, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Between 1 and 3, between 1 and 3 there is a ZA. Okay? Between 1 and 3 there is a ZA. Between 3 and 2, there is a ZB. Between 3 and 2, there is a ZB. 3 and 2. Okay. Between 2 and 4, there is a ZA. And between 4 and 1, there is a ZB. Do not you see that this is one of the ports and the other port is this? Agree? So, lattice is a redrawn form of a bridge. This bridge is not a balanced bridge, no. 
z a by z b is not necessarily equal to z b by z unless the they are equal <coughs> all right which is a trivial case so it's not a balanced network it, had it been a balanced bridge then it would not have served as a two pole why because then there is a transmission zero at all frequencies isn't that right so it, it, it doesn't serve our part but it is important to identify important to recognize that this is a bridge and if you recognize this is a bridge then you can determine you can determine the z parameters very easily we did that I think this is the example that we did z parameters input impedance with this open so it is simply z b plus z a divided by 2 agree this is z 1 1 is the point clear input impedance with the output port open so z 1 1 is this and z 1 2 since it is symmetrical this is also equal to z 2 2 and z 1 2 is v 2 by I1 let us do this this would be interesting we recall because we did this earlier what we have is Z A Z B this is Z A and this is Z B ok we apply a current generator I1 here and we measure the voltage V2 here plus minus and V2 by I1, uh, V2 by I1 shall be equal to Z12. You see V2 by V2 is this voltage minus this voltage, which simply means that it is ZB minus ZA divided by 2. Why? Because the current divides into two equal parts, I1 by 2 and I1 by 2. We did this earlier. So, our expressions are that Z11 equal to ZB plus ZA by 2 and Z12 equal to ZB minus ZA by 2 and the transfer function if you want to find out V2 by V1 it is simply the ratio of these two and therefore this is equal to ZB minus ZA divided by ZB plus ZA all right which can be non minimum phase because the zeros of transmission are the zeros of Z B minus Z A difference between two PR functions. The zeros can occur anywhere in the S plane. For example, let us take a simple example. Suppose I have the first order transfer function S minus first order all pass S minus 1 by S plus 1. Obviously, if you equate this to Z B minus Z A divided by Z B plus Z A your Z B would be a 1 Henry inductor and Z A would be a 1 ohm resistor. A simple lattice containing 2 inductors and 2 resistors that serves the purpose. There is an alternative I could write this as 1 minus 1 over S divided by 1 plus 1 over S. In other words Z B could be a 1 ohm resistance and Z A could be a 1 farad capacitor. Agree? This is a simple uh, synthesis of non minimum phase transfer functions. Now we go to that structure that is an LC network, LC network terminated in a resistance. This is the most useful form of network synthesis in practice, most useful form. The, it can be either a voltage generator or a current generator and the response could be either the voltage we assume the termination to be 1 ohm we normalize the termination to 1 ohm and this current is I2. So, we can have <coughs> a transfer function like let us say V2 by I1 what would you call this transfer impedance trans impedance capital Z21 and you can express this in terms of the Z parameters that is Z21 divided by anybody recalls what this is Z22 plus the terminating resistance 1 Z21 by Z22 plus 1. You could also have a Y21 that is I2 by Z1 and this simply in terms of the 
y parameters of LC network it is y21 divided by y22 plus 1 there is a similarity between this that is why we take them we take them together. Now in either case in either case if this is let us say p of s by q of s and this is let us say n of s by d of s is there a conclusion that you can make about the numerator polynomials in the two cases. You see z21 that is right the numerator polynomials either p or n it must be either purely odd or purely even. Can you tell me why? They can't be even? Oh, why not? You see what is required is that z21 should be a odd, odd rational function. Odd rational function is either odd by even or even by odd. Right? It is the numerator that shall remain here. P of s shall be the numerator of z21, n of s shall be the numerator of y21. The numerator can be either purely even or purely odd. Therefore, P or n of necessity have to be either purely even or purely odd. But the uh, so ratio purely odd is that P of s is always odd? No, because there is a resistance here. So, uh, however, z21 is again z21 is an odd rational function, so is z22. The, so the total z21 transmittance. Total z21. That is right. This is neither purely even nor purely odd because this is not a pure LC network anymore. It is a resistance. There is a resistance. So this point is not Which part? So that z21 will be purely odd. z21 belongs to LC network, small z21. It is a z parameter of the LC yes, network. It is a v2 by i1. And therefore, this must be purely odd. Yes, yes. If it is purely odd, it is either odd by even or even by odd. Either either case, it is an odd rational function. And therefore, the p, the numerator polynomial of capital Z21, shall be the same as the numerator polynomial of small Z21. And therefore, it should be either purely even or purely odd. It cannot be otherwise. Should be p s be equal to Z21? No, I must have z21 as a rational function. P of s could be a fourth degree polynomial. You cannot have a, a network function which is four poles at infinity. No. So, p s would be the product of numerator of z21 and z of z22. No. You see, you remember that z11, z22, z12 that is same denominator in general. In general, they have the same denominator polynomial. And therefore, if this is let us say this is p of s by q of s, I am sorry, let me use some other q1 of s, then the denominator of each of them shall be q1 of s. Okay? And therefore, z21 shall be p of s divided by p of s plus q1s. no some p1 of s plus q if this is p1 of s. So, q1 of s into something. Why into something? It is 1 you see z21 is z21 divided by z22 plus 1 substitute this here. So, is this always valid that the denominators are the same? Oh if they are not the same how can it differ let there be another factor q2s then this will be written as q2s by q2s that's it you see any pole of z12 must belong to these two whereas z11 and z22 can have personal poles if they are personal poles there is another factor here so you add that here also in the numerator as well as denominator you can always make the denominators identical the lesson from this exercise Oh, in the nodal analysis, yeah, it was delta, the node determinant, node admittance determinant. All three. All three, let me say. Okay, the, uh, the lesson from this exercise is that if we consider, let us say, Z21, which is P of S by Q of S, which is 
z21 small z21 by z22 plus 1 all we have commented is that this numerator polynomial must be either purely even or purely odd. You cannot say this about q of s, q of s because it may be sum of even and odd. That is it will be the sum of even and odd, there is no other way okay because z22 is odd and if you clear them of the denominator polynomial q of s will surely be the sum of an even and odd polynomial. So, if q of s is let us say n plus n if you break this up into even and odd parts one thing that you can say about q of s is that it must be Hurwitz is not that right any transfer function to be realizable has to be has to have a Hurwitz denominator. So, this is Hurwitz if it is Hurwitz what is the test for Hurwitz the ratio of the even to odd part continued fraction expansion of n shall lead to positive <coughs> coefficient <coughs> quotients agreed continued fraction expansion of this shall lead to quotients which have positive coefficients. Now, continued fraction expansion is also cover 1 or cover 2 is not that right and therefore, do we do we agree that m by n will be an L c impedance do we agree that it will be an L c impedance is not it. Yes. If you make a continued fraction expansion with all quotients having positive coefficient that means, you are determining inductors and capacitors agreed. So, m by n shall be L c it is either an impedance or admittance it does not matter ok. Now, therefore, the synthesis this is the test for Hurwitz. How do you test a Hurwitz polynomial? It is a there are two two things you see L c impedance is one of the properties is that poles and zeros interlace. It is also true that any L c impedance can be expanded in continued fraction yes, sir. with positive coefficient quotients. Now, it is the other way round here any Hurwitz polynomial the even and odd part the ratio of even and odd part can be expanded in continued fraction expansion with positive quotient positive coefficient quotients. Therefore, m by n must be L c and of necessity its poles and zeros must interlace there is no other way. Sir, here we are considering only the uh, denominator. denominator only the denominator because the numerator is purely even or purely odd. Sir, but yes what is but? Sir, for synthesis we require the whole function. Pardon me? For synthesis of we require the whole we are coming to this. Now, the synthesis procedure should be quite simple. I will illustrate this with z21 that is it is given as p of s by q of s where p of s is either purely even or purely odd because we want to realize this is an L c network terminated in 1 ohm resistance ok. So, p of s is purely even or purely odd and q of s must be Hurwitz. So, what we do is we write the we separate the even and odd parts ok. Then, then if p is even if p of s is even then we divide not this step we divide both the numerator and denominator by the odd part of the denominator agreed. If I do that then obviously, we shall get p of s by n divided by m by n plus 1 is the point clear. Now, do not you see that this is an odd rational function and therefore, you can identify this as z 2 1 and this as we have already argued is an L c driving point function therefore, this can be equated to z 2 2 is that right they have the same poles they are the same poles z 2 1 is odd z 2 2 is odd z 2 2 is L c driving point function z 2 1 is not necessarily a driving point function it is a transfer function otherwise this uh, trans is equal to z 2 1 by z 2 2 plus that is right it is z 2 z 2 1 divided by z 2 2 plus 1. So, what we have done is comparing we have identified two parameters of this L c network and that is enough for synthesis z 2 1 by z 2 2 plus 1 <coughs> uh, in order to in order that this idea soaks in 
Let's take an example. Okay. And then we will see the uh, suppose our function is 2 by s cube plus 3 s square plus 4 s plus 2. Suppose this is my z21. Okay. The numerator has to be either purely even or purely odd. Incidentally, what kind of a function is this? What kind of filtering does this perform? Where are the zeros? This is low pass, obviously. What is the DC value? 1. Infinite frequency value is 0. There are 3 transmission zeros at infinity. That is right. Okay. Now, this say a lot. If you, if you make this common sense conclusions, the network is obvious. We will argue it out in a minute. But let us proceed systematically. We have this as Z21 by Z22 plus 1. Since the numerator is even, we divide both the numerator and denominator by the odd part of the denominator that is s cubed plus 4s. And I write this as 3s squared plus 2 divided by s cubed plus 4s plus 1. All right. Therefore, this is my z21 and this is my z22. The problem now is that it is not realization of just one parameter. I can realize z22 by Foster 1, Foster 2, cover 1, cover 2. I can do any of this, but I have to simultaneously realize z21. Whatever network I realize must satisfy the prescriptions on z22 and z21. Now, we do not have to worry about the poles. Because if you realize Z22 by any manner you like, the poles of Z21 shall be the same. So, all we have to worry is about the transmission zeros. In other words, the problem of synthesis, mark my words now, is to synthesize Z22 in such a manner that transmission zeros are realized. Okay? In other words, the problem of synthesis now reduces to that of synthesizing a driving point function. Z22 is a driving point function. We have to realize Z22 in such a manner that three transmission zeros at infinity are realized. Now, Z22 means what? We start from port number 2 with port 1 open. Okay? Now, how do we realize? three transmission zeros at infinity. Obviously, we must have capacitors in parallel, in shunt, not or we have to have. You see, it is a third order function. We should not require more than three reactive elements, more than three. And there are exactly three transmission zeros. Therefore, my, my network must be of this form, two capacitors and one inductor. Incidentally, you see that this is a low pass filter. So, but uh, at s is equal to 0, there is no transmission. Uh, there is no transmission 0 here either at s equal to 0. You see, my, what is my network now? I can draw the total network now. What should I have here? Voltage generator or current generator? No, this is Z21, current generator. So, I shall have I1 and this is connected to 1 ohm resistance, this is V2, agreed? So, all you have to do can is to, sir, can, I please repeat, sir? can I please repeat, yes of course. <clears throat> you see the problem has reduced to that of synthesizing Z22 in such a manner that the transmission zeros are realized. If the transmission zeros are realized then Z21 shall be realized because they have the same poles whichever way you realize Z22, the poles of Z21 are being realized. All you have to worry about is the zeros of Z21 and zeros of Z21 are the transmission zeros. Now, we, we see that there are three transmission zeros at infinity and Z22 has to be realized such that <coughs> there are three transmission zeros at infinity. Two of them are being taken care of by these two capacitors and the third one is being taken so then care of. How do we get this? There are two uh, capacitors and one inductor. 
How do we get that? There are, yeah, that's a good question. Why not two inductors and one capacitor? Ah, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked that question. Suppose we do that. Suppose we do that. What is the problem? The problem is that if you connect a current generator here, this poor inductor is in series with the current generator and is absolutely ineffective. Okay. There will be two zeros. There will be two transmissions. There cannot be three. And therefore, I cannot choose this structure. I must go back to two capacitors. Depending upon the input, sir. Depending upon the input. Suppose the input was a voltage generator, and then this would not have been correct. The other case. <coughs> it would have been the two inductors and one capacitor. Is that okay? Now, what remains for the synthesis? What remains for the synthesis is to find these three elements. And all that you have to do now is to expand Z22 in continued fraction, right? Starting with which powers? Highest or lowest? Highest. Highest powers. Now, can you start with Z22? Can you start with Z22 or you have to take the reciprocal? Z22 does not have a pole at infinity. You take the reciprocal and make continued fraction expansion. Then you will get C1, you will get L, you will get C2. Finally, finally you shall get an admittance 0, which means that impedance open. Is this clear, the procedure? Last one, okay. What we have is, let us carry this out. I had to realize Z22. Sir, uh, how do you draw, draw that circuit? So intuitively that you Intuitively, know. yes. Yes, yes. So we draw it intuitively. Absolutely. So in any problem, you cannot change. Of course you can. If you know the transmission zeros. Let me tell you, let me tell you how the you think. That is right. Suppose, suppose I have a Z21. Let us take something else. Suppose I have a Z21, which is S square plus 1 mm -hmm. divided by let us say S cube plus plus 1, there are S squared and S star. Okay? Suppose I have a transmission, a transfer function like this, then I know that either I shall have a parallel resonance circuit like this with 1 and 1 or I shall have a series resonance circuit like this in shunt. I know this because I have to create a transmission zero. In addition, if the degree of the denominator is 3, then I have one transmission zero at infinity. Now, neither of these create a transmission zero at infinity. So, I must have a capacitor either here or here. No, I cannot have another inductor. Pardon? Inductor in series. Inductor in series here. I would not be able to realize Z21 because the whole thing now shall come in series with the current generator. No way. The structure itself will show the impossibility. You see, this is not this current generator Z21 is V2 by I1 and whole thing is in series, so it does not affect. Because it is a Z21, Z21 is V2 by I1. If we had a Y21, that would be I2 by V1. Yes, this would have been all right, but not otherwise. So, in this case, we add three zeros. So, if we add five or seven. Ah, we will have, we will we'll continue. Yes, yes. The structure shall be obvious to common sense. All you have to do is to argue, argue it out. We have to have a capacitor in parallel. We have to have here. There is no other way. You you cannot have the capacitor here. Yes. So what is the problem with the inductor coming in series with the current source? Oh, anything in series with the current source, any impedance is ineffective. This is equivalent to the current source itself. Because by definition, a current source delivers the same current irrespective of the load. Right? Therefore, anything in series with the current generator is ineffective. Anything in Parallel voltage generated in effect. So when you when you develop Z22, 
when you develop Z22, the last element must come in shunt with a current generator. On the other hand, when you develop a Y22, if the transfer function is Y21, when you develop a Y22, the last element must be in series with a voltage generator. These are the checks and balances. If it comes otherwise, then obviously it, it does not make sense. We will start from here tomorrow. We will repeat, yes. <laughs>